What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. Hope you're all doing well. It's currently Saturday morning. And normally around this time, I like to maintain all of my aquascapes. Uh, let me know in the comments who else likes to do this on a Saturday morning. But yeah, Saturday morning, uh, usually I'll maintain all of my tanks in about two, three hours. Depends a little bit on how much I have to do. Uh, but today we have a big task ahead of us. I'm gonna maintain and trim the scapers tank behind me. All right, so this is the current condition. I think it looks really good right now. Um, it's not even that overgrown yet and I, I could wait a couple more weeks to, to trim it. Um, but the reason I want to trim everything right now is uh, I'm running an article for this aquascape. So the, the plants that you see here, they were sponsored by Denela Plants. And I'm writing an article for their website about this tank. And the article is due at the end of this month, the end of February. Um, so by the end of February, I want to make sort of like a final shot of this cape. So it has, by then it has to look like pristine, it has to look in the best condition possible. Uh, so that's probably the main reason why I want to trim it right now. Uh, another big reason is the, the Fissinus moss, the Phoenix moss. And it's a bit hard to see, but there's a lot of uh, hair algae or thread algae inside the moss. Um, so we have to, yeah, we just have to trim it. I was trying to get rid of it by like dimming the lights a little bit and dosing easy carbo, but wasn't really working. So I'm just gonna have to trim everything. So for the next few weeks, it'll probably look a little bit bare, but that's okay. I think people are always scared to, to trim their planted tanks because yeah, why would you, why would you waste something that's looking so good? But in my opinion, after a good trimming session, it always comes back looking even better. So the plan is to basically, I'll start with the foreground. So I'll tr start trimming the hair grass and the halantium tendulum because those plants, they will, you know, they will float up and we can easily take that out. Same with the Hygrophila pinatifida. So first we'll do the carpet, then I'll start trimming the Hygrophila pinatifida. And then we'll just move on to the um, background, the Ludwigia, and maybe a little bit of the cryptic green as well. So yeah, after we've trimmed the foreground, the pinatifida, and the background, then the last thing we will do is the moss. Because I'm thinking, if we start trimming the moss now, the problem with moss is that it doesn't float up to the surface. It will actually sink down. So if we do that first, then it's just gonna create a big mess. I think if we trim all the other plants first, then it will be a lot easier to trim the moss. So I'll leave the moss till last. So let's get started. It's currently almost 10.30. I'm curious how long it's gonna take me. Definitely gonna be a couple hours. Uh, I'm gonna do a time lapse and I'll just take quick breaks in between and I'll show you guys the progress. Quick update, it's about 15 minutes later. So we just trimmed the carpet. I first went in with the big scissors to do the majority of the work. And then took the smaller spring scissors to touch it up a little bit. I've also thinned out the halantium a little bit. There were all these small, small runners from the halantium. So I took out a few of those because I don't want too much of the halantium in here. I want the, the carpet to be mostly hair grass. And then a few bits of, you know, halantim here and there. So that's it. Now let's continue with the hygrophila. Okay, we're making good progress already. It's almost 11 o'clock. I want to take a little break and, and talk to you guys about something. Uh, I personally think that a lot of the success of a planted tank depends on maintenance. 
So if you want to have a successful planter tank, you need to enjoy maintenance. If you're not enjoying maintenance, then it's very going to be very difficult to do these necessary trimming sessions to every week do a regular maintenance session. Like for example, right now, it's uh, Saturday morning, it's raining outside. Um, I have a nice music in the background and I don't really have to go anywhere this, this morning, you know, so I'm not in a rush also. And that's yeah, one of those things to, that will help you as well. I think if you would just enjoy your maintenance sessions, um, yeah, you will have a lot more pleasure with the hobby as well. So that's just something I wanted to, to talk to you guys about, to get off my chest. So this is the current situation. Pina Tefida has been trimmed on both sides as well. And you can be quite brutal with this plant as well. You can really hack it back. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt the plant. It will grow back looking even better, even more compact, and hopefully a bit more um, red colored as well. Right now it's still quite green because the light is not on full power yet. It's on 60% right now. And hopefully after a few more trimming sessions, this peanut feed will really be nicely red pinkish. Yeah, let's get back to work. It's currently quarter to 12. I just took a little break. And in the meantime, I had the EM skimmer running to get rid of all the floating hair grass particles. So now we have a clean start again to get going with the visitants. Uh, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get rid of all those trimmings is because I don't know, maybe I'll use this visitants for another project. And I didn't want to have all these pieces of small hair grass stuck between the moss, you know. So now we can start trimming the fistons. Oh yeah, also remove the um, lily pipes, the inlet and the outlet. And this is a small, small tip for you guys. Whenever I remove these, the inlet and outlet, I always forget which, uh, which tube is for the inlet and which tube is for the outlet, because they go in at the back and then I kind of lose them, you know. So I learned my lesson the hard way and now I've, I'm marking the one that is the outlet with a small thing there. So now I know exactly where the outlet goes and where the inlet goes after I'm done cleaning them. All right, so it's already a huge mess, but that was to be expected. Uh, making good progress. The, the parts that I've trimmed, everything underneath that still looks healthy. So I wanna now start clearing it up a little bit, removing some moss. So my idea is to start siphoning out some moss with a simple hose. I'm gonna siphon it out into this bucket here. And the bucket has a return pump. It's gonna go back up into the back of the aquarium. So hopefully this way, I've actually never tried this before, but hopefully this way we can like siphon out a lot of moss without having to worry about the water drop water level dropping too much. So wish me luck. All right, it is now one o'clock, making quite good progress, but I'm getting hungry, it's time for lunch. So 
I'm gonna continue after that. Yeah, I think we're 90% done. It's just the, the places, you know, in between the plants where you need to be a bit more careful, a bit more precise with the trimming. It needs a bit more time. But I think, uh, I think we're making good progress. The method with the siphoning out is also working quite well. Here we have a bucket full of fissidens. Sure, lunchtime. See you guys later. A few moments later. I just finished with lunch. While we were having lunch, I had the filter running just to clear up the water a little bit. But I think I'm actually done. I think most of it is trimmed. A few bits and pieces here and there, but I'm satisfied, I think. All right, so next step is to just do a large water change. And I'm gonna try to, yeah, sort of gravel vac the carpet a little bit because there's a lot of small pieces of fissidens in between the carpet. And if we just leave it there, then it's just gonna create a big mess. So that's the next step. Yeah, do a big water change, clean the glass a little bit, and then we're done. Did about a 70% water change and now I'm filling it back up. So I think one of the main reasons why there was some algae inside the fissonance moss is because it just collects a lot of dirt, you know. So what I'm doing now is I'm slowly filling it back up with this tube. And at the same time I'm sort of like washing the, the rocks and the fissonance moss a little bit. And as you can see there's like a lot of dirt coming out of it. So hopefully this will like clean it up a little bit and when all these fissness moss will grow back we shouldn't have any hair algae issues anymore all right so it's now 3 30 so that's what a five hour maintenance session looks like of course this was a bit of an extreme example if it wasn't for the moss this probably would have taken me only an hour hour and a half and it took a lot of breaks in between and the filming took, took a lot of time but i'm happy with the end result and remember, this moss, this business moss doesn't grow that fast. I think next time I'll have to do something like this will be in a half a year from now or something. But that is what the thing looks like right now. Just fill it back up so it's still a bit cloudy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this very extensive maintenance session. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this yet. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.